trains right now, hoping they don't come. It always is a an interview buzzkill. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's totally. Yeah. Do you ever pick that up for you like recording? You know, a little train in the background. All the time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm obsessed with the recording trains. I have like way too many train samples. I don't even know what to do with them. They all kind of sound the same too. It's like, why am I getting another one? <laughs> so yeah, uh, you announced a, a show here at the arena, the Save on Food Center for early next year, which is exciting. Um, you know, it's, I was thinking about the zone and we've had a relationship with you guys, I think from pretty much day one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been so cool to see it all just, you know, watching your whole career go. And now you're like, headlining arenas is that what does that feel like i mean is this something that you have always strived towards and you're like yeah it's about time or does it still feel weird that you <laughs> that level weird yeah i don't think there's ever like an expectation that we should be anywhere it's always met with just a lot of uh shock awe and gratitude um but i guess yeah you want to get bigger but then you have to ask yourself why do you want to get bigger and for us, it's because that transaction between song and human is a good thing. It's a, it's a it's a healing positive force, and so if that grows, then you're only doing more good in the world. Um, whereas if you want that to grow because you want to be more successful, then I find that's not as healthy of a motivation. And so I try to recenter in the former um, motivating force of like, oh yeah, music just makes the world a better place and therefore the more of it the better the bigger the better that's awesome absolutely yeah how was the europe tours how'd it go great yeah it was amazing yeah touring europe is like being in a fable those cities are just so incredible and enchanting and so many cultures and the people that come out are so interesting and um it's a dream yeah we're so fortunate to finally uh have that kind of a relationship in a place like that uh, and so you're playing, you're, you're doing a North American tour in about a month and a bit, right? You're kicking off at the beginning of June down in, in the States and then you're playing Vancouver. Um, but then you're not coming to Victoria till the new year. So is this, this is sort of like a larger city tour of North America and then you're doing a Canadian thing in the, into the winter. Is that how that's going to go? Well, it's, it's a North American tour, but it's really an American tour with two Canadian dates, Vancouver and Toronto. Gotcha. Um, okay. yeah, so that's. That's what it is. Um, co-headline with Cave Town. We've never done a co-headline and elevated to these kind of 5,000 cap, 8,000 cap rooms. So, yeah. yeah, it's all very, it's daunting and uh, exciting. And we hope that they just have the right band. You know, sometimes you're like, is, are we supposed to be here? Is this really us? <laughs> <laughs> that little bit of imposter syndrome. You're like, are you, are you sure though? Yes. Always. Yeah. It keeps you, keeps you sharp. That imposter syndrome. Yeah, grounds you a little bit. So when you got to announce the Vancouver show and when you got to announce the Victoria show, because they're both arenas technically in your hometown, because BC is that, which one are you more nervous for? Because like, which one is your family going to come to? Are they coming to both? They should. <laughs> oh, they're they're both pretty nerve wracking. Um, but we played uh, the Save on Food Center back in like 2018. Mm -hmm. And it was a big gamble. And I don't think it was one that we should have taken. Like it was, it was very undersold. Mm. And whenever you do that as a man, like you take a risk, you take a leap and it was the wrong decision. It's, it's a little bit like professionally traumatizing. Sure. And so you, you carry that failure with you. And when you have a chance to have a redo, it's very nerve wracking. It's like that energy is kind of polluting your anticipation of the event and so I would say easily I'm more nervous for Save on Foods because mm. I just, I crave that, that retribution, I guess. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. You want to come back better, better, stronger, crush it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just don't want to, I don't want another flop, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of excitement here already just uh, from the announcement and everything. So I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. Cool. <laughs> yeah. We've been giving away tickets on the uh, morning show and they're very, very happy. Oh, uh, wonderful. The new album, uh, obviously, even just based on the title, it has a lot of themes of grief and death and mourning. And and I guess 
Um, but it's not dark, it's positive, right? And I'm wondering, like, if there was there a specific reason something did something happen in your life or someone else, you know, in the band that wanted you to explore those themes more closely? Yeah, I think it was a, a number of things. Uh, probably mainly the band was gifted this amazing turn of events in 2020 uh, after, you know, close to two decades grinding it out and uh, life changing. And it just reframes life and it provides so much perspective and it gives you so much to be grateful for. It shows you how fragile and slippery everything is. And, and so that just sort of birthed a newfound sense of gratitude in me personally and the, and the band, but it has that has certainly found its way into writing. And I find the best way to be grateful for the day, grateful for life, is to reflect on death, is to really remind yourself and root yourself in the fact that it's all finite. Um, and then, yeah, there was some death that occurred. Um, a close uh, friend of mine from high school who we started our first like pipe dream band in, he like lived with me in grade 12 and we would like stay up all night talking about how we're going to be famous one day and play for thousands of people. He got uh, cancer in the past and had some pretty powerful conversations with him in those final days, but just like the gift, the privilege mm -hmm. to be here and how we just take it for granted. He had eye cancer. So he lost an eye and he's like, people take their life, their eyes, their senses, their fingers for granted. And it was just like so profoundly moving and sobering. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of on this tip right now. I'm just like every day really matters. And, yeah. Just, yeah. Don't don't waste this opportunity. I've got to uh -huh. got to tell Ryan. Yeah, we so, have a very parallel situation. This is that. this is pretty heavy, but um, uh, you and I have had interviews before Ryan in the past, and uh, it's normally been with me and a guy named Dylan. Who does mm -hmm. the show here? Mm -hmm. Dylan uh, is finished work now because he's got stage four cancer, and he's got uh, it may even be the same thing. He had it like twenty plus years ago. It was called uveal melanoma, and it took his eye when he was like twenty years old. He's wow. forty five now and it's come back and it's like in his bloodstream so he's terminal and this is heavy i'm sorry but but he's he's also gonna go soon and so we're wow. all so very consumed by grief me especially since he was my partner uh on the morning show for 16 years so um anyway so i can relate and uh and and actually find the the music the singles that you've been putting out and that mm -hmm. new album very comforting in a lot of ways because i i feel the same way and i have those same kind of conversations with him and it sounds like that you've had with your your buddy as well so wow anyway, yeah i'm so i'm so sorry that's just so yeah. sad um but you know when we get close to that energy in a way it's a gift because it does wake us up and yeah the world changes when we get close to that energy Absolutely. um and i think the 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 duty then is to use it wisely and and to not fall into despair for sure and that's absolutely dylan's message and i feel like that grief chapter for everyone at the station yeah very much is that ever since we did these like two huge concerts to support him i feel like i'm definitely taking it as a chance to yeah see the world in a different way like you never know what can happen day to day and uh getting to like experience everything mm -hmm. as intensely as you can is really important it's easy to lose sight of that sometimes yeah. too, right and then, we get so caught up in daily things yeah. all the time and our own problems and me 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 and there's a whole world out there yeah yeah, yeah. right in front of us every moment absolutely yeah. so um also, I didn't even realize that you'd put out a solo record until Emily mentioned it uh, before we started interviewing you. Uh, is that something you're going to be doing more of as well? I mean, maybe right now there's just too much going on, touring and guy. new album and everything. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. That that was, you know, something I was kind of doing on the side. And it didn't really make sense to release it because Mother Mother was so busy. But at the same time, it's like if I don't start, I never will. Um, so yeah, it's just something that exists on the periphery sure. and it's a passion project. It's an art project. Um, I don't want to put pressure on the project in any kind of solicitous or markety way. I just want it to breathe and evolve over what will be the rest of my life. Like I'll be releasing mm -hmm. those albums until I die. I know that in my heart. And so therefore just like, it's okay that, 
you know, it's just kind of lying dormant and people can discover it. Should they naturally, that's fine. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the vibe. Cool. When I was talking to Jasmine like a month ago before, right as y'all were starting the European tour, I asked her about songwriting styles and how you come up with stuff and just how you work as a group. So when you start a song and you've got like the little bits of it, how do you go from there? Do you just like save it in your phone and go back to it, work on it a little bit? Do you have scraps of paper all over the place? How do you start a song? Um, I think voice memos on the iPhone are just so amazing. Um, you can be anywhere and anything will come to you, whether it's a lyric or a melody. Um, so I have like thousands of those. Um, and yeah, you just take it to the studio, take it to the workbench and just start building. It's just time invested. It's like, if you want to write a song today, write a song today. And uh, it's as simple as that. And I don't really care how they birth themselves at a piano, at a guitar, in the shower, with a drum beat whether I'm like hearing church bells in Prague and, you know, record that onto my phone and then put that into the computer and make a loop and add a bunch of reverb and just start like chanting. Mm -hmm. And that turns into like a cool bridge of a pop song. Like that stuff happens all the time. And it's more just immersing yourself in the creative process and finding the joy in that play and then letting go of the outcome, but trusting that the more you do it, songs of merit, will come forth and define, you know, your, your legacy. And, and that's kind of how I see it and how I do it. It's awesome. Um, we won't ask you, won't keep you much longer. Uh, now that you're playing arena shows, do you have a venue in mind that is like the goal venue that you want to play? Or have you already played that venue? Um, you know, we're pretty excited to play Red Rocks Amphitheater yeah, yeah. in denver with cave town on this cave town tour like you see the pictures and it's just jaw dropping incredible yeah so that's always been on the list and can't believe it's happening look mm -hmm. really forward to it we'll take pictures please and, do uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, send not, send pics <laughs> not only is it a beautiful place but just like the the, the, ros the roster of people yeah. who played there in the past too you're know, like standing on hallowed ground and yeah, yeah. That's pretty 100%. Cool. Yeah, you can totally pick up on that energy in those venues that the Rolling Stones played in when they're just starting out. You know, if you just kind of like meditate into that, it can inform your performance, I find quite potently. Absolutely. Uh, what should people be looking forward to when you are playing here in Victoria at Save on Foods and then when you are playing at Rogers Arena? What are y'all bringing to the tour this time? And, you know, like production is up, energy is up. Um, we put so much care into creating a set list that honors the whole story with lots of creative interludes and bridges. And there's a, just a, an interactive component to our shows now that I think has really refined itself, like just how we regard the audience and speak to the event. It's very positive. Um, it means the world to us that people walk away, not only like hearing the songs they love, but feeling like they were seen they were felt and there was an effort to connect on a human level. So that's kind of how mother mother is taking the stage these days. That's, that's awesome. Cool. I saw some footage um, from y'all when you were in Europe and like people coming up to you with tattoos or asking to get signatures for tattoos. Does that ever feel a little weird that people are walking around with like your signatures, your art in the best way? Oh. Well, I mean, I, I, I've regretted tattoos. And so you feel like a bit of an onus, like, Oh God, I feel responsible for the tattoo you will regret. Um, <laughs> yeah. But at, at its core, it's a pretty mind-blowingly sweet gesture. Pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I believe that, like you said, the pre-sale goes on today. Uh, uh, pre-sale started the 23rd for the new tour you just announced. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah, sure. We'll <laughs> go like, with that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, okay, very cool. Well, we can't wait to see you in the new year. You got a long wait, but uh, you'll be nice and polished and, and practiced by then. <laughs> yes, totally. On the road yeah, months. and uh, we will see you at Save on Foods Memorial Center February 18th. Yeah, can't wait to see you guys. Thanks so much for your support, ongoing support, means Always. the world. And yeah. great, great chatting. Have a have a blessed day. Blessed be the fruit. Have you seen the anime <laughs> tale? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Thank you so much, Good. Ryan. Appreciate it. See ya. Bye.
You're in the zone. At 91.3.